is the difference between fiqh and morality? What is the difference between fiqh and akhlaq? In fiqh, we are obliged to do things. We have to perform salat, we have to perform fasting, <coughs> lying is haram, mm-hmm. telling truth is wajib. All these codes which are mentioned in fiqh. When we look at akhlaq, akhlaq is also discussing these issues. So, is akhlaq, are akhlaq and fiqh the same or differ? If they differ, how they differ? If they are the same, then why we are separating them and we discussing them separately? Can anybody tell me? Any brainstorming? We have studied here akhlaq and fiqh. What do you think? What comes to your mind? We have done some experience of studying both fields. In what area you find them to be different? Mm. Very good. Yeah. This was one difference we discussed it. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So one difference was the goal. In the third what we are looking for is to obey the commands. The person who is following the is to make sure that he has done his duty towards Allah. So he is rewarded with Jannah and he will not be cast to hell. But in Akhlaq, you are looking for something more than this. In Akhlaq, you are looking for perfection, for getting close to Allah. This is the soul. <coughs> A person who follows fiqh is about to get those gardens and mountains and booths which are mentioned in Quran. And uh, to avoid the hellfire. But a person who is following akhla is the one who is to achieve to barizwanun min Allah akbar. The pleasure of Allah. To get to the highest levels of perfection to get close to Allah and uh, flourish the potentialities which have been bestowed to him. So sometimes uh, another aspect of this is that akhlaq will be in raising the scale and fiqh is in falling the scale. We talked about it before. That for example we perform salat. We have some specific duties mentioned in fiqh. If you follow all the things, then your salat is sahih. When salat is sahih, means you're not going to punish, to be punished for not performing salat. And in this salat that you perform, your salat and the salat of the Prophet are the same. Because both, when you do, then you have done your duty. You don't need to repeat it. In this aspect, your salat and the salat of the Prophet are the same. When the Prophet performs Salah, then he has done his duty, he doesn't need to repeat it. The same way, when you perform your Salah, you have done it and you don't need to repeat the Salah. Both Salah of you and the Prophet are Sahih. But when it comes to Akhlaq, it's in four raising scale. There are darajah, there are different layers, there are different degrees. To what extent your Salah can ascend you, to what extent the Salah of the Prophet ascends him. As-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. The Prophet had the mi'raj, huh? He ascended to heaven. As-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. Salat makes the believer to ascend. As-salatu qurbanu kulli taqiyin. Qurban means the cause of getting close. This comes from qurb. So salat makes you get close to Allah. Here you see that the salat of the Prophet and our salat is so different. Okay? 
And uh, then you can answer so many questions. Usually people, when they don't know these aspects, they get into a wrong direction. Why in Islam you are, perform, you are allowed to have four, women, four wives? This is not fair, this is not according to human rights, women's rights, and so on. Why in Islam you have killing as a retaliation? <clears throat> then you don't need to get to be apologetic, clear. When you're talking about fiqh, <coughs> you're talking about the law. Says you are allowed to marry to four women, not more. Okay? But is it being recommended? You are going to get into it from akhlaqi perspective, huh? Usually when they are rejecting, they get from akhlaqi, a moral perspective, to attack something is, which is fiqhi, which is rule, which is a law. Yeah, from moral perspective, Allah also says, if you cannot establish justice, just suffice to one. Yeah, morally speaking, one. But imagine, if a person, or imagine a society that the women, they themselves are willing to marry some of them to a one single man. So, should Islam allow or not? You're talking about the law. In law, you have to talk about the lowest of the things. Because sometimes then people, maybe, I don't know, after 100, 200 years, the cultures may change. You know, there was a time, I remember, in the uh, 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 books I read in, in France, there was a time that they used to, the, the priests, when they talk, attack Muslims. You see, they said, we, we do not get married. So we have kind of mortification, and the Muslims get married. So they have kind of mean <coughs> appetites in their life. So we are so clean. And now the culture is changed. They say, okay, you see, they limit you, their, your relations. They limit your relations and we do not limit you. So cultures may change. Maybe after 100 years, somebody may come and ask you, why four? We want to have five. So these things, the culture changes. But what is there as the law? Law is in the falling scale. Law deals with the, the worst condition. But morality, no. In morality, from moral perspective, yes. You are, you are alim, you are a good person. You find that, morally speaking, you have to be loyal, loyal to your wife, not to marry more. But sometimes, if it is a necessity, it becomes. When it comes to law, if somebody killed another person, do they have the right to retaliate or not? Fiqh says yes. But Akhlaq says, if you forgive, it's better. Uh, at the end, the verse says, if you forgive, it's better. This is Akhlaq. So you cannot come from Akhlaq perspective to attack something which is law, which is jurisprudence. Two different approaches to things. Okay? So, <coughs> then you can find so many examples and extensions for this in the society, you know, issues that are surrounding you. Why Islam permitted marrying uh, girls at a young age? It's a permission. You are not recommended to do that. This is not akhlaq. Nobody is coming to provoke you to do that. This is a law. Means if in some society, girls of nine years old are capable to marry, then it's okay. Less than that is not permitted. But after nine is okay. But it's not telling you come and do that. This is the law. It's putting the red lines. 
You cannot marry less than nine. Must be above the nine. But it's not encouraging you to say morally it's a virtue to marry nine year old girl. Okay? So you can benefit from these differences a lot when you come to analyze things in a proper way. So their approach is different and the goal is different and also the subject is different. The subject also is different. What is the subject? In fact, we are talking about duty bound, about mukallaf. <coughs> Man has a responsibility before Allah. So in fiqh, we are talking about the responsibilities that you have, your do's and don'ts. But in akhlaq, we are talking about noble traits of character. How can we differentiate? They say, imagine, if a person who never lies, if there is a person who never lies, he happened to tell a lie. He happened to tell a lie. We can discuss it in fiqh, but we cannot discuss it in morality. Why? Because this telling lie for one time, it's an act, it's a deed. You can talk about it in fiqh. It is halal or haram, we say it's haram. But you don't talk about it in morality. Why? Because this is not coming out of his soul. His soul is against telling lies. His soul is trained in a way that he always tells truth. So it is accidental that he told a lie. This deed is not coming out of a character. It's not a quality in his soul. Okay? Of course, akhlaq is talking, when he talks about deeds, he's talking about deeds that purify your character. So morally speaking, even it's not good to tell a lie for one time. But anyhow, something which is accidental, a person who is very uh, mean person, a very mean person, but some, all of a sudden, once in all his life, is to be generous and give something to some people. This is not a moral act. It is not raised out of a character. He, in his character, is a mean person. A person who is coward, in some specific occasion, he might say something that shows bravery. This doesn't mean that the person is brave. From akhlaq, a moral perspective, he is coward. But sometimes he might have some brave acts. So it is not to be discussed. It is not to be considered a moral thing. It is accidental. But it can be discussed in fiqh. Because it is an act that the mukallaf did. 